Um, once upon a time, there was a man who came across a very special goose. Every day he visited its nest, and every day he found that the goose had laid a glittering golden egg. And the man was overjoyed. He was a poor man, and he saw this as a golden opportunity to lift himself up from poverty. So he collected the eggs, and he started selling them. And pretty soon, he became quite rich. But it wasn't long before he grew impatient. He became greedy, and he wanted more. Still, each day, the goose only laid one glittering golden egg. And then one morning, the man woke up, and he had an idea. He could speed things up if he cut open the goose and collected the golden eggs all at once. And so he did. But what he found was not a pile of golden eggs. It was just a dead goose. And dead geese don't lay golden eggs. They don't lay golden eggs. They don't lay eggs at all. And the man was left without any golden eggs, and pretty soon he fell back into a life of poverty. Hands up if you've heard this story before. It's quite a few of you. Nice. It's, a, it's an ancient Greek fable. And uh, of course, the moral of the story is that when life is going well, don't get greedy. Don't ask for more, because reaching for too much might mean that you end up losing everything you have. Now, about six years ago, I watched a very interesting documentary. It's called Green Gold, and maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you recognize this man from last year's TEDx in Wageningen. Uh, this is John D. Liu, a documentary filmmaker and ecologist. And in the documentary Green Gold, he references an idea that is quite well known among many indigenous societies and many ancient societies, but seems to be kind of lost in our current global society. He says that the source of what we consider to be wealth are functioning ecosystems. And the products and services that come out of these ecosystems are the derivatives. They're what we consider to be wealth. And he argues that it's impossible for the derivatives to be more valuable than the source. So I'd like to make the comparison to Aesop's fable that the, that, that the ecosystems are the geese, and the derivatives are the golden eggs. And as a species, we have been killing the geese in our efforts to get more golden eggs through our mining, deforestation, industrial agriculture, and pollution, and so many other activities, we've been doing a great job at destroying our ecosystems. We've created a lot of wealth, but it comes at a huge price. And the trajectory that we put ourselves on is one where it won't take very long before we've created the conditions that all we will have left is dead geese. And with it, our golden eggs will be gone forever. So according to the IPCC, we have maybe until 2030 to get serious about doing something about this, <clears throat> about preventing future civilizational collapse. So if we decide that we care about ourselves, about our lives, and about life on this planet and about our offspring, we need to stop killing the geese. And there's a lot of things happening today in this, and this weekend. I believe there's many protests going on, um, things happening in New York. That's, a lot of that is very much focused on stopping of the killing of the geese. But I will say that we also need to start to learn how to rehabilitate them, how to heal the geese. So I'm talking about ecosystem restoration. And this is the process of turning the negative spiral of destruction and decay 
and turning it around into an upward spiral of function and growth. And in this way, we do not only contribute to biodiversity, um, but we also uh, can help to stabilize the climate. <clears throat> and I'll give you two examples of, of some projects like this. Um, in the Green Gold documentary, uh, the Chinese government took an area the size of Belgium called the Lus Plateau. It used to be the cradle of civilization. Um, and they took it and turned it from this into this. After, after centuries of uh, mismanagement, it had decayed, and within, I believe, 10, 15 years, they managed to turn it from the left picture into the right picture. So it can be done. Here's another project, a little smaller. Last year, with our Renew Foundation, we went to Spain, to Almeria. This is also quite a degraded area, as you can see. I believe it used to be quite forested. But now you can see many gullies and not so many trees, except in the foreground, but they, are, they just look bigger because they're closer. And what we did there, we spent two weeks uh, taking a course together with Sunsea Desert Technology, a foundation in the area, and urban uh, street forest. And we built little check dams in one of these gullies. We were not even 10 people most days, but we had a lot of fun. And we prepared the conditions for the next month when people brought in compost, they brought in mulch, and they brought in little saplings and just planted some trees in the right shaded areas. And now we get some updates from that, that there is some growth, which is super cool. It's really rewarding to, to see that, yeah, we did this and it's still ongoing. But obviously, compared to this, it's a very, very micro version of restoration. And I don't think that what's going on in Spain is really enough to reverse the damage from industrial olive uh, plantations um, that are uh, sucking up the aquifers. So we have to find ways to scale up to the level of the Les Plateau and beyond. Ecosystem restoration is not just about bringing back uh, environmental returns or um, quality. Ecosystem restoration can also create green jobs that can support communities and provide meaning and hope to depopulating rural areas, which would also lessen the population and ecological burdens on our ever-growing urban areas. And also there, in our urban areas, there are opportunities, let's call it urban ecosystem restoration, there are opportunities because cities themselves are not islands, they're part of the global ecosystems, they're part of, of ecosystems, and they have their own ecosystems as well. So I, it's really important that we understand that ecosystem restoration is much more than just planting trees. Now I have some good news. In 2021, the United Nations has declared that it will start a decade of ecosystem restoration, which is really cool. And it has the FAO and the IUCN and other big institutions are involved. And uh, so maybe, maybe you think like, wow, OK, well, everything's going to be fine. And um, apparently, the world is taking this seriously. Maybe as an individual, I can just sit back. I can stay at home. You know, watch Netflix, have a beer, chill with my cat. <laughs> or not. I think we can do better. I think we can do more. I think we can be proactive. And I think that we can take the initiative. I think that there is much more to the problems in the world rather than having large institutions take care of things. I think every individual is a part of this global system, and every individual, therefore, plays a part. 
I think we need a fundamental paradigm shift, though, because as everyday individuals, I think there is an opportunity for us to do great things and be rewarded for that. There is a need, I believe, for everyday people to get positively involved with the natural world, and I think there's a need for the natural world to get positively involved with everyday individuals. But for most of us, this isn't part of how we live day to day. So we need a behavioral shift. And this can only come through a shift in our understanding of ourselves and our situation. I know from personal experience that this is possible. Eight years ago, I went through a pretty profound change. I used to be quite shy and very cynical. I would never have imagined myself here on a stage in front of all of you people. Quite bizarre. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and yeah, I was pretty cynical about the world. I, uh, you know, I was miserable. Uh, I, I really struggled to get my, my things in order. I was, I was probably depressed. But then I got help from my community, from people at work, from my friends, from my family. And I began to learn how to make small changes in my behavior. And these small changes ultimately led to changes in my habits, which led to changes in how I saw myself. And then ultimately, I changed the story of my life. And so I'd like to ask the question, what if we change the story of the world? Beginning with the story of the goose that laid the golden eggs. So you have to understand, in this story, the man was not alone. He was also part of a community. After all, he had to sell the eggs somewhere. So what if the community had found out about his plan to slaughter the goose? and they had intervened to stop him. In this story, the community nurtured and cared for the goose. And, he made, and they made sure it was healthy and happy. And in return, they still got a golden egg each day, and they appreciated it. They were grateful for it. Now, this is an interesting map. It's a map of, oh, sorry. Uh, of some ecosystem restoration projects going on today. It's actually a map of restoration projects that have a, a documentary about them. Uh, you can uh, Google it. Um, <clears throat> and it sort of it shows that there's already a movement happening of everyday people getting involved with restoration projects. And there's, there's much more even than, than what's on here. Um, and the Renew Foundation aims to support this movement, aims to support these locations, these projects, and many more that are coming up almost every day. Well, maybe not yet every day, but we're getting there, I hope. We, uh, we aim to raise awareness, to organize events, workshops, and lectures, connecting everyday people with experts, and from there, to bring them to project sites like, like here in Spain, so that hopefully in the years to come, we won't just have 10 people working in one gully for two weeks a year, but we will have hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of people restoring degraded ecosystems all over the world. That's what I hope will happen. That's the story that I would like to see develop. It's not always easy, but honestly, it is a lot of fun if you do it the right way with the right people. And, uh, and I think it's, it's very much possible to get out of our comfort zones and outside the cities and into the rural areas and to do this work. And it's, it's super rewarding. Um, now, I'd like to end things with... Um, with the question that was on the TEDx Wageningen website, how do we move from here? 
Well, I think there are three things that we can do. I think we can learn about ecosystem restoration and about our place in ecosystems. I think we can all, we all know how to use Google, right? Hands up if you know how to use Google. Okay, that's, that was a joke. <laughs> I think we can all learn about what organizations and people there are out there that we can, that we can find and, uh, and get connected to. And I think we can all get out of our comfort zone and get out, out there and actually do ecosystem restoration. We can learn to care for the geese and appreciate the golden eggs. Thank you very much. <laughs>